Greetings, developers, and welcome to the G Suite Dev Show. In this episode, we conclude our two-part series on field masks. I'm your host, Wesley Chun. In the last video, we discussed reading data from an API and how you can use field masks to control the amount of data that gets returned. You know, partial response? Well, today we'll focus on writes, or more likely, updates. You know, via post, put, or patch? Well, you already know that field masks aren't things you wear, but instead work like a filter. More specifically for updates, think of them as a bit mask, where data represented by bits that are on will be updated, whereas those that are off are ignored and remain the same. You pass in a field you're updating along with its name in the mask. Generally, the field mask will consist of exactly the attributes you're updating. If you provide additional fields in the mask that are not in the request, those attributes will be reset. Yes, I'll show you what I mean in a bit. Right now, let's look at our first example, this Google Sheet. Let's say we want to bold the first row. You'd send this JSON to the API. Ignoring fields for a moment, you can clearly see that the repeat cell request affects the first row. In particular, we want to set the cell's user entered format slash text format slash bold attribute to true. The payload looks legit without fields, so why is it there? Well, remember how I said that the field mass will consist of exactly the fields you're updating? Well, here we only want to affect each cell's bold attribute, but no other text format field. Well, for fun, let's add the italic flag. Now our request affects bold and italics. Since we don't have italics in the request, bold will be set, but italics will be reset. Make sense? All right, here's a more extreme example. Let's just remove the last part of that mask. Well, now it's a superset making up all text format fields. Any field not in the request will be reset. In this case, while bold will still be set, all others will be reset. Yep, you can kiss italics goodbye again, but now the same goes for strike through and underline. The original font family and size will come back too. Well, if you want to specify all fields, you can use asterisk as a shorthand alternative to listing every single one, which you'd have to look up anyway. But be wary that if the API changes, you could have inadvertent side effects, so minimize your use of the asterisk. Here's the original JSON in actual Python code that bolds row number one, leaving all other attributes untouched. Also see the Sheets API page on update field masks. Now let's bold some text with Google Slides. Instead of cells, it's text on the slide. Given you already have the text box ID, this JSON bolds the first eight characters in the text box. Notice that the fields value is simpler here. No user entered format slash text format. Well, that's because the root object for the slides request is style. So you don't have to specify any other attributes. Whereas for sheets, the root object was cell, meaning you needed the full path from the cell down to the bold flag, meaning user entered format slash text format slash bold. Each API differs, so check the docs to determine your root objects. Here's some Python that implements bolding of the first eight characters of the text box. And that's almost the entire story on field masks. I'd like to share a few parting tips as we wrap up. One, for the Sheets and Slides APIs, fields for read operations is an API call parameter, like you see here. But for write operations, they're an attribute you set in your requests. Updates may also have fields as a parameter, but this depends on the API and possibly your client library. Two, some recent APIs have also started supporting the dotted attribute notation, so you can use periods instead of slashes. This makes the APIs more consistent with Google protocol buffers. But not all APIs support it yet, so if you try it and it doesn't work, you're going to get an HTTP 400 error and need to change the dots back to slashes. Want to learn more about protobufs and field maths? Check out this page in the docs. Three. When we discuss field masks with read, it's all about what comes back in the response and not the actual API request. In other words, you can have non-read actions that send back data that you can filter. In this example, creating a new presentation with the Slides API isn't a read operation, but acts like one due to its response payload. The API creates a document and then returns a payload as if you called get on it, which then you can filter. The field mask we're using requests just a presentation ID plus the IDs of all the slide pages and objects on each page. We pass in those fields in the same way for this massive write plus read operation. And four, to complete our journey, we'll look at another read plus write example that uses both read and write field masks. The example updates a Google Sheet 
but it has this include spreadsheet in response flag you see here. That requests the updated sheet data be added to the response payload, which then can be filtered, limiting the amount of data returned. The data has a header row and a first column made up of timestamps, where the update request changes the timestamps to just the date in year, month, day format. In the code, we request the API return just the sheet's name and the URL, plus the names of all the individual sheets. Well, how's that for the kitchen sink example? Field mass in the update request body and field mass in the call to obtain a partial response. Well, that wraps up our journey into field mass. Be sure to tune into part one if you missed our show on partial response. The field mass guide in the Slides API docs is the most comprehensive, covering read and write, so check it out if you haven't already. And check out the last link to see more episodes of the G Suite Dev Show. Now that you know how to use field mass in read and write API calls, it's time for you to try out field mass to build that awesome app. Be sure to subscribe to our channel to get the latest from Google developers. This is Wesley Chan, and we'll see you the next time on the G Suite Dev Show.